वेलकम टू वाधवानी फाउंडेशन हाउस कीपिंग प्रोसीजर ट्रेनिंग लेट्स वॉच अ वीडियो एंड लर्न हाउ टू डस्ट अ गेस्ट रूम इन अटेल प्रिपरेशन बिफोर एंटरिंग द गेस्ट रूम रेडी द हाउस कीपिंग ट्रॉली विथ क्लीनिंग मटीरियल Remember a room should be dusted starting from the entrance in either clockwise or anticlockwise direction Procedure For dusting doors and windows fold the designated wipe four times and spray dusting solution on it Dust inside and outside of door frames or window frames dust the door knobs and other hardware for dusting closets or shelves spray the wipe with a cleaning solution dust the closet door the rods hangers and hooks Dust the shelf thoroughly with a wipe. Dust all the items placed on the shelf and then rearrange them. For dusting appliances like the mini fridge, clean them with a wiping cloth. Open the mini fridge, dust all the items and place them back. Remember to clean all the fixtures of furniture that you come across while moving in a particular direction. For dusting television and other electronic gadgets, use a microfiber cloth for dusting. Spray the cloth with disinfectant and dust thoroughly. For dusting furniture like a table, dust each item placed on the table. Displace the items and wipe the table surface from top to bottom with a wiping cloth sprayed with surface cleaner. Rearrange the items on the table as earlier. Dust the sides and legs of the furniture properly. Dust the lamp shades and check if they are in a working condition. For dusting telephones, spray a disinfectant on the wiping cloth and dust. Dust the keypad, earpiece, etc. and check if the phone is in a working condition. Remember to dust all the furniture as mentioned before. Dust the table drawers, clean all the items placed and rearrange them. Wipe all the parts of furniture thoroughly with a wiping cloth. As mentioned before, For cleaning windows, spray the cleaning solution on the cloth and dust the window frames. Use a glass cleaning solution to spot clean the window glass. For dusting the decorative lights and lamps, unplug them. Dust each part with a wiping cloth. Check if they are in a working condition after dusting properly.
dust the furniture as described earlier. Wipe all the electronic gadgets, lamps, etc. in the way described earlier. Dust the bed thoroughly. Continue dusting in the same direction around the room. Dust the fixtures, furniture, electrical and electronic gadgets as mentioned earlier. Clean the mirrors and glass with a designated glass cleaning solution. Dust the bathroom door in the way described earlier. Remember to use an appropriate cleaning solution for cleaning glass. Spot clean the electrical fittings on the wall. Continue to dust each and every item you come across till you reach the entrance. Wrap up. Ensure that all surfaces are clean and properly dusted. Make sure all glass surfaces and gadgets are spot clean. Make sure that all the items are arranged as per hotel standards. Hi, this is Dr. Jeffrey Payne at Payne Chiropractic Center. I want to talk to you a little bit about sweeping, vacuuming, that kind of thing in your low back. Whenever people sweep, a lot of times what they'll do is they'll lean forward like this and sweep. And what that does is put tremendous pressure on your low back. That's not good for you. So what you want to do is tough to bend your knees while you're sweeping. You look funny. So what you want to do is you want to put one foot in front of the other like this. That puts all the bend right here at the, at the hip and at the knee so that you can move forward. The same thing with vacuuming. If you were vacuuming and you bend forward like this all day, people come in with low back the next day. If you put one foot forward, you're actually stretching and strengthening those joints to support your low back. And you can use each, either foot, it doesn't matter which, and go forward like that. When you go to pick up and do the dustpan, what you want to do is that same thing. One foot goes in front of the other, and you go ahead and sweep the stuff into the dustpan. Up it comes, and you dump it out. Thanks for listening. If you do hurt your back or if something bad happens to it, you can always come to Pain Chiropractic Center, new patients, get two exams or two x-rays, free examination, and um, we'll check you out. Thanks. Hi, my name is Polly Hart, and I'm going to tell you how to mop a floor. I'm not going to try to go over anything that you've already learned. Um, I watched a video from E. Howe, They're Idiots. So, uh, I'm going to show you this, Jennifer. This is your basic mop system. Um, this is the handle. It's got a little turned out here. Keep your head in there. This is a scotch right pad. I put in just the very, at the very top. Okay. This is your ringer. This is your bucket. You see, most of the time there are lines in the bucket to tell you what's too tall, what's too doesn't have So, you just kind of go with the bottom of the ringer. See that? Alright. What you need to do is you need to first move everything out of the way, all right? Then you sweep it. That's the obvious stuff. Um, okay. Uh, all right, and then you hit the trouble spots. Like, let's say there's uh, grease. You need to get yourself a good degreaser or ammonia or an oxyplane, which is just hydrogen peroxide, or ammonia, or whatever the spot calls for, whatever type of floor you're cleaning. Use your discretion on that. I'm not going to try to tell you what the solution is. The solution that I'm using today is uh, bleach and sodium lauryl sulfate. I just get the cheapest um, dish soap that I can. 
and put it in there. There's no lotions, there's no fragrances. So, dirt cheap. Two dollars for supplies will clean with last you bike, uh, depending on what you clean. Maybe a hundred buckets of uh, solution. Um, all right. Now, here's where they are just idiots. All right, you notice that I just put it in there, didn't ring it up? Okay, this is what you do. Mopping is actually called collecting, mop to collect. They were just like, doo, 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 okay, we're done. So, what you need to do is the first thing after you get your trouble spots is you get it wet. Right? We're getting this wet. We're actually getting it all wet. So, they call that mopping. That's it. That's dumb. I, I can't understand why they would just say that. Um, that's part one. That's getting it wet. But the next thing you need to do is actually mop. Get it up. You see, water with hydro, uh, hydrostatics, with uh, the way water works is that you've got your floor, and then you've got a layer of water, and the dirt will lift. It'll come to the top of the water, and it'll become, you know, fluid, and then you're just, you're moving dirt around when you're doing this. So, if you see anything crazy, that's what little scotch pads for. Boom. Uh, okay, so now, we've got it wet. So, <laughs> most people say, okay, I'm done mopping. Uh, no. Okay, what you need to do now is you need to go back over, and once, let's just say I've gotten the whole thing, and the whole thing is wet, right? My water is filthy. You can still clean with filthy water, because all you're going to do is collect now. You're just going to go about and collect the water. But let's just say I, you know, come out. It doesn't matter if it's cold or hot on the second time around. I just use hot water all the time. If I'm out of hot water, no big deal. I'll use cold water. But then I'm done. So I'll put my ringer in here. And I'll get it as dry as possible, which involves a couple of spins. I'm going to just come and rack them up here. And I just, I don't push, I just fall. Alright. So this is dry as possible. So voila, very light mop. No pun intended. So now I've got it. I always, I always teach my people, imagine that there's a racket ball right here. And they talked about the figure eight. But you really want to make sure that you're collecting. Because all your dirt's going to go to come to the bottom there. So you want to make sure that you're always collecting. Always collecting. And if I had a really dirty floor, I would have, if I did this, I'd have a large line of dirt on the floor right there. So what I do is I'll bring it up, and as you're bringing it up, it's co it's connecting itself to the mop. So then you come back, put it in the water, agitate a little bit, come back, dry your mop out again, collect all that water that you just you know from your whole floor. So hopefully this is <laughs> much more informative than the other really cool video with all those cool effects, but not much knowledge. See that? Beautiful figure eight. Imagine that that thing is just sitting right there. Watch this. This little guy, can you see that? It's a piece of tape. No. Okay, well, I'm, I've, got, I've got it. I've collected this little, I can get a whole bunch of trash this way. And if, I can always just make sure I've got the trash. Just by spinning this thing around. Even, you know, new footprints. And then I've got all the trash right there. Sometimes, I'll even just go over, like outside. Check it out. There you go. Got a clean surface. Ta-da! Okay. Anyway, hopefully that is much more informative. And, uh, did I miss anything? No. Again, on the solution, use whatever you feel like using. Uh, you can spend a lot of money, I won't mention chemicals or brands, but you can spend a lot of money on it. Uh, if bleach soap doesn't work, try alkyl, uh, ammonia, uh, but never mix bleach and ammonia together. Okay, bye. My name is Polly Hart. Check out my website, polyhart.tk. Hi there, my name is Dolores Fenn Bogart and I'm going to show you a fast and an easy way to wash your windows inside and out just by using these two cloths. This is called a basic pack. You get a blue Enviro cloth and a purple window cloth. 
The window cloth is your polishing cloth and you're going to use that fairly dry. My Enviro cloth is already wet and wrung out, so I'm just going to use it flat folded. When you wash your windows, you actually want to box the outside of your edges by going around your window frame and then go across the face of the window. You're knocking off all the dirt, the debris, the bugs, anything that hit your window or anything they left behind is getting trapped into the fibers of the cloth. I'm now going to take my spray bottle. When you're working outside, you especially want to throw a little moisture on your window before you polish it with your window cloth just because the air around you is evaporating it so fast. So once again, just polish first around the outside edges of your window frame, then go across the face of your window. And you'll see you actually have a total reflective surface right behind you. Streak free and shiny, inside and out. It's a quick and an easy way to maintain windows and it's environmentally friendly because all we're using is water. If you are already familiar with Norwex's products, I'm sure you have a fantastic consultant, but if you would like more information, please send me an email and I look forward to connecting with you. Have a great day. Hi, I'm Ann Myrick and today I'm going to show you how to vacuum floors and carpet. First, you want to pick up everything off your floor so you don't run into it with your vacuum. Get up any types of paper clips, bobby pins, anything that could hurt your vacuum. And then you're going to decide what kind of carpet you have. Um, do you have a short pile or a longer pile? And you can adjust the, um, your vacuum to the length of the carpet. Then we're going to turn it on, and this is going to be loud. And you're going to do a back and forth motion on your carpet. And I like to go just a little slow to be sure. I'm going to turn that off for a minute. I like to go a little slow just to be sure that I get everything. Now, on your floors, on your wood floors, you can do the same thing, but you have a, this vacuum and most vacuums will have a bare floor um, level that you can use. And you will do the same type of technique, go back and forth on your floor. Um, and that is how you clean um, hardwood floors and carpets with a vacuum. I'm Ann Myrick. Thanks.
mahal kita Kay sarap isipin na yan ka Para po'y nalulumay Basta kasama ka lahat na Magayang puno ng kulay Naririnig ang taloy ng bumig At hindi makangin Sa piling mo'y naglalapay Ako ang nananangingin Kay 
The first step in your polishing process is to uh, put us down a slight amount of water. We've already cleaned the floor, so our surface is clean and film free. We're going to put down a light amount of water, just enough to keep the dust down and to lubricate the pad so that it runs smoothly over the surface. The key is also you don't want the water to dry out. So if it does start getting a little dry, I will add water to it. The surface should be covered counterclockwise so we don't shoot water all over. And you go over each section six to 10 times. You'll notice the product is working when the water starts turning milky, which is what it's starting to do now. Remember, we're working up with the grits, starting with the lowest grit first, which is the 800, which will take out scratches, minor scratches, and even out the surface so that when you go over it with your 1500 pre-polish pad and your polish pad, you'll get a lot greater, smoother surface. And remember, gloss is a condition of smoothness. So the smoother we get this floor, the glossier it's gonna be. You'll notice the weights on the machine help the diamond pads cut into the surface a little more to smooth it out. You should have a wet vac to pick up the slurry, or you can use a double bucket system where you have clean water in one bucket and pick your soiled water up with the other bucket. Okay, what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna pick up this slurry and then we're gonna put the gloss meter on it. Let's see if the 800 did indeed smooth the surface out a little bit. We have since rinsed the floor. Now we're gonna check our, our gloss meter to see if we have smoothed the floor out even more. 3.7, we're making improvements. Now we're gonna go with the 1500 grit. What we're gonna do is repeat the process that we use for the 800 grit. I have put water on the floor. I'm gonna add the weights to the machine. And we're going to go in a counterclockwise motion eight to ten times over the surface. Take your time. You're dealing with a very hard surface here. It does not respond as fast as you might be used to on vinyl composition floor or a floor finish. And once again, you know the pad is working when the water turns milky, as it's starting to do now. I do not recommend using a high-speed machine for this process, and certainly not a burnisher. Although, if you're doing this on concrete or terrazzo in a wide open area, you could use propane equipment. I'm pretty much done with this area now, going over it eight or ten times. I'm going to pick up this slurry, I'm going to rinse it and we're gonna see how our gloss is after using the 1500 grit. Four point eight. Now we're gonna put the 3000 in it and this is where you should really see a noticeable difference to the gloss. Once again, we're putting enough water on the floor to lubricate. For your 800 and 1500, you use a little more water and for your 3,000, use a little less water, but once again, you don't want it to dry out. We're gonna take our time and go over this very slowly, eight to 10 times, because this is the part that the customer is gonna see 
or that you're going to see. Some of you may be thinking, okay, I get the floor all glossy and looking good, but how do I maintain it? The 3000 is the pad you would maintain the floor with. You can put it on your automatic scrubber for daily cleaning. You can put it on your burnisher for nightly burnishing or a couple times a week. And you can also use it to touch up if you see any traffic areas. Natural stone care is a little more unique than putting a permanent type or or water-based acrylic on the floor because once you put those on the floor you have to work with them and maintain them either by spray buffing or scrubbing and recoating. With this system you don't have to. Anytime the floor starts looking a little dull just come in and repolish it. Now I could keep going over this and get it higher on the gloss meter but I want to show you what eight or 10 passes over the floor does for you. So I'm going to rinse this off thoroughly. Then we're going to put the gloss meter on it and see what we come up with. Well, as you can see, we finished up with the 3000. Let's see how our gloss is. 7.8. We can do a couple things at this point. You can leave the floor. What I recommend doing while you have the floor in the condition you want it, or if you wanted to get it glossier, all you have to do is go over it a few more times and then impregnate the floor with a penetrating sealer. Your John Don rep can tell you which one is best for your needs. At Titus, we use tools to our advantage to ensure the job is done correctly and that it is performed to the Titus standards. In this video, we will discuss the burnishing process. This process is a very important step because it ensures the floor will shine and last longer. It is necessary to burnish the floor after every application of stain guard. The burnishing machine has a propane fueled engine. It can have one or two spinning heads where the twister pads are attached. There are three different types of twister pads. The red pad is 400 grit. The white pad is 800 grit. The yellow pad is 1500 grit. To put the burnishing machine in mounting position, tilt it back so the heads are facing out. The head has Velcro strips that will securely attach the pads. Caution! When mounting the twister pads, two operators are always required. One who holds the machine in position, the other who attaches the pads. It can be very dangerous doing this operation alone as the machine could fall causing major injury. Once the pads are attached, put the machine in an upright position and turn on the propane. Before starting the machine, check that the lower speed is set. Turn on the machine by turning the engine key, then pull the speed lever to change the speed. Set the highest speed to burnish. The burnishing machine must be pushed slowly as it is required that the stain guard reach a temperature of 91 degrees to achieve the desired gloss. This also ensures that the stain guard product is burnished in and cannot be peeled or scraped off once it's completed. Remember to lower the speed slowly before switching off the machine. At Titus, we strive to always operate in safe conditions. Remember to ask your supervisor if any doubts or questions arise. Remember to always be clean and courteous on the job. If any questions arise during the job, always call and ask someone. We want to do the job right the first time. We hope this helps you in your training. We strive to provide the highest quality our customers want and deserve. Thank you for watching. We start with a thorough walkthrough of your home, which allows you to address any areas of concern that you may have, and allows us to fully observe the areas we'll be working with. Once completed, it's time to start prepping. It's a simple step, but also one of the most important, as this ensures that your furnishings are safe. Afterwards, it's time to pre-vacuum your home. And while most of our customers regularly maintain their carpets, our industrial strength machine is sure to pick up any loose soils that may have appeared since your last cleaning. 
Next, we treat any spots or stains with the proper cleaning products for both the problem at hand and the type of carpet we're working with. If for whatever reason a stain does not come out, or if it does require extra work, we'll always bring this to your attention. After spotting, it's time to pre-spray the home. Our powerful in-house pre-spray is just one of the many ways we separate ourselves from the pack. Next, it's time to move on to cleaning. Our industry-leading truck-mounted systems provide high heat and quality rinsing that simply can't be beat by portable or rental machines. Utilizing a one-wet, two-dry method, this helps ensure a quality cleaning and also a quick dry. And then it's time for our optional restoration process. It's perfect for heavily soiled areas that are normally found around entryways, halls, and dens. Our rotary machine will simply make short work of these areas. Once all cleaning has been completed, it's time to set up our speed drying system. While running, we put up any tools, products, and hoses that may have been used during the cleaning. 